welcome William to the Automobile Woche Congress 2022. Thank you, Berker. It's my pleasure. Let's start directly. Yeah. You were a young entrepreneur as you started NEO in 2014. Yeah. What prompted you to do so? Actually, I already had the idea of starting up a smart EV company back in 2012. And actually before that I have been a serial entrepreneur and I have organized and started my very own internet companies and also automotive website companies. Since 2000 I have established one of the earliest automotive website companies in China called the Bit Auto. And in 2012, actually, three things made me think about the necessity of starting up a smart EV company. The first is about the climate change and also the environmental pollution. Back then the air pollution in China was so pretty severe and I was about to become a father. So I thought I should make some changes to change this environment and the situation. And secondly, I think that since we have this emergence of the smart technologies, we should really leverage this to combine that together with the smart EVs. And thirdly, I also realize that there are some opportunities where I can serve our users in a different way and provide them a better service. With that, I have come up with the idea of making NEO a smart EV company, also a user enterprise. But you must have been thinking not only about, a, about, about environment and climate change, but as a real businessman, of course. Yeah. Wasn't it a gamble uh, to enter in this very established auto industry for you? Actually, when I witnessed these changes, I realized that these changes are not just for the automotive industry alone. It is actually also the change or the transformation for the whole energy sector as well as the technology industry. Just like with new technologies with opportunities. Also, in the energy sector and automotive industry, there are new opportunities for us to reshape or restructure the whole value chain. That's why for the smart electric vehicles, it is not just for the automotive industry. It is a new thing, also for energy and for technologies. All the new technologies, all the emerging technologies will be utilized on the latest smart electric vehicles. That's why in the process we realize there is value, there are opportunities where we can reshape and create, and we believe that it is also an opportunity where we can actually leverage this technology, transformation and innovation for the automotive industry. And many people have questioned about the profitability of Tesla, and Tesla has proved that they are very profitable already. And this is also showing the industry, the public, the confidence that smart EVs can happen. Like you, many have thought and tried. At one point there were, I guess, more than 300 young startup manufacturers for electric cars yeah. alone in China. Yeah. Uh, but only a few may yeah, make sure. a breakthrough. Sure, only sure, a few. Sure. Uh, do, do you see that uh, the same way? And actually, this is a very typical environment to start up a business here in China. The competition is actually very fierce, and it's indeed that we do witness a lot of innovative startups emerging in China. And each of them actually have their own character. And for me, I think that maybe there aren't this many startups like 300. Maybe not that many. The real players I can see in the playground may be around 20 or 30 that are actually making a real product or doing real things. And also there are established ones who are also establishing their new brands for the electric vehicle like Geely or SAIC. They have also established their EV brands for that. And in addition, we also have those tech giants also joining in the fields like Xiaomi, Huawei, and Baidu. And this kind of fierce competition is actually a good thing, not only for companies like NEO, but also for the whole industry. What makes NEO different? What is your USP in comparison to all the others? And actually for NEO, we do have our special competitive edge, and in this regard I can recognize four as our main competitive advantage. The first is our chargeable, swappable and upgradable power solution. This is actually a comprehensive and systematic solution we provide to our users, and of course, our power swap that can swap in a new battery in under five minutes. That is the core of this power solution. And the many media have also recognized the value and the significance of this technology, and they even rewarded were recognized NEO as one of the most innovative companies 
companies. And this is also bringing a lot of value to our users and are also highly recognized by our users. And our second competitive edge is our smart technologies. Recently, we have launched our NT 2.0 technology platform. Our products are now based on our NT 2.0 technologies. So the core specifications of our NT 2.0 technologies that all the vehicles coming from NT 2.0 have more than 1,000 tops computing power. They come with 33 high-performance sensing units. We have LiDAR. We also have 8 megapixel cameras inside of the car. We also have Nomi. That is our AI companion where you can talk to Nomi inside of the car. And in terms of the R&D of these smart technologies, we are also doubling down our efforts. Right now, we have over 6,000 people specifically working on smart technologies. This is also helping us to continually improve the competitiveness of our products. And the third competitive edge of NEO is our performance, our mechanical performance, and also our build quality. In terms of quality, actually, JD Power has recognized NEO cars as vehicles with one of the best qualities among all the smart electric vehicles. And this shows that our quality, our performance has been well recognized not by our users, but also by the industry. And the last one is our idea, our concept of making user communities and being a user enterprise, because we want our new community to be a place where our users can share joy and grow together with us, with the community, with our user enterprise. We can also provide a holistic experience from end to end for our users. So in all these four aspects, we've been taking the highest standards for ourselves, and we believe that this is also why we can survive against this fierce competition here in China. Well, good arguments, yeah. and uh, Norway is working. Yeah. But uh, now you want to want to go into into really established, strongly established countries with their own manufacturers like Germany yeah. and France. Yeah. Will Europe be a tough sure. nut to crack for sure. you? <laughs> sure. It's true that we have a lot more. You have a lot of great automotive companies here in Germany and also in Europe. Like you've mentioned, Mercedes-Benz, BMW and Audi. They are all successful companies, not only in Europe, but also in China. If you look at the sales volume of their cars, actually, we still have a long way to go to catch up to that sales volume for us. But in terms of the Chinese automotive market, it is actually the most open market with the fierce competition there. Because all the automotive brands are welcomed. There are brands from China, brands from the US, from Europe. They are all actually serving their users and selling their cars in that market. And if we can survive in such a market with so fierce competition in China, then we believe that we also stand a good chance of surviving in other markets. Last year we have entered the Norway market and we are in there for up to almost a one year and to date we have already become the best selling six and seven seat cars in the premium SUV segment. And this has also gave us sufficient confidence because our products and the services are well recognized by the Norwegian users and by the market. And we believe that the needs for good services and products are universal worldwide. The European companies also prove this. They have good products and services. That's why they are so popular and well recognized, not only in Europe, but also in the US as well as in China. Then, for NEO, it's the same. If we can take the good products and service here, we believe that we can also win the hearts of users here. So, and how many cars do you want to deliver this year uh, worldwide? Okay, <laughs> that's a good question. In terms of the sales volume and the sales target? Yes, we do have that inside of the company. But publicly, we've never mentioned any specific sales volume as a target for the whole company. For us, what we care about the most is about the satisfaction of our users. That's why publicly we're for NEO, one of our top targets is actually to make NEO a brand with the highest user satisfaction. And this is also what we care about in certain aspects. We have already fulfilled and even surpassed the expectations of our users. But in many other aspects, we still have a long way to go. And maybe if you ask me about our target for entering the European market, my thinking is that in two to three years, I would like to make NEO the brand, the automotive company with the highest user satisfaction here. And actually, if you already have satisfaction for the services and the products here in Europe for the local users, a good sales volume is a natural result of that. That's why when we look at the sales, we look at the user satisfaction instead of a pure sales target.
In terms of the users, yeah. yes, but yeah. you um, have investors too. Yeah. Yeah, and so true. maybe they would like to know what your increase is <laughs> this year and next yeah. year. Yeah, Can you sure. tell us a percentage yeah. about maybe this year? Yeah. Well, for the current year, actually, we don't have a specific sales volume target set for the European market, because as you know that on October 7th, during our new Berlin event, we will announce a brand new business model here in Europe, with which we will provide an innovative service and experience to our users here. And the key target or the priority for us this year is to make sure that our service system, our whole experience system can work, can up and running here in Europe. Then we can provide a smooth experience and service for our users in Europe in the long run. That's why for the current year we will be focusing more on running through our whole system here in Europe so that we can get prepared for the upcoming years. And also, we do have investors from around the world, not only from Europe, but also from the U.S. and other markets in the regions. But in terms of establishing a business here in the automotive industry, as I've always mentioned, it is just like running a marathon on a muddy track. You will never become successful overnight. And it takes you a very long term to gradually establish yourself. That's why for our global expansion and for our business operations, I actually set myself a clear principle that is long-term thinking, thorough preparation, and also with great patience. And this is also our principle for the European market entry. So my, my question uh, about a possible break even <laughs> for you this year, next year, uh, yeah. I don't know. Uh, I, I, I don't uh, have to, to, to ask, or well, what can you say about that? In terms of our break-even target, we did have some communications with the capital market. And if you look at our gross margin improvement, you can find that we have realized over 20% as our gross margin for the vehicles. Of course, in the first half of this year, our margin and revenue were slightly affected by the rising raw material costs, mainly driven by the batteries. But with 20% gross margin, we already can manage to cover the SGA overheads, expenses. Then, the other side of the expenses will be the R&D activities. Actually, we have been showing strong commitments to improve our R&D and also making investment into our R&D activities. For the current year, we estimate that we will be in investing over 1 billion US dollars into our R&D work, and this will continue to grow. But of course, we believe that the growth of our sales volume and also our gross margin will outpace the growth of our R&D investments. And it actually took Tesla 16 years to become profitable. And we believe that we don't need that. We don't need 16 years to be break-even. In terms of uh, Elon Musk, uh, in yeah. the media, you are often called the Chinese Elon Musk. Okay. Do you like that comparison? <laughs> Well, actually, Elon Musk and I, we are two totally different persons. Of course, I have full respect to Elon and also the Tesla team. And actually, if you ask many of our users who have both Tesla cars and Neo cars, they will also say that Tesla and the Neo are two completely different companies because for Neo, we focus not only on advancing our technologies, but also serving our users. That's why we recognize ourselves as a user enterprise, because we want to use technology which is an enabler or an approach to serve our users better. Have you ever met uh, Elon? No. Uh, <laughs> no. Yeah. You are producing battery electric cars only. Have you ever thought about hydrogen and so on? No. Why not? The reason why we are staying focused on making battery electric vehicle is that we believe that it will be the ultimate solution. And we want to stay focused on the ultimate solution that is a smart electric vehicle, smart battery, electric vehicles. Because if you look at the hybrids, yes, it's popular in many markets. And in China, there are also some products with the range extension, with the range can be extended by using gasoline. But we believe that when it comes to utilizing smart technology, battery electric vehicle is always the best solution for this. Smart for the smart technologies, especially 
if you look at the transition of the whole automotive industry. We started with a vehicle and then we entered the electric vehicle era. And we believe that ultimately it will be an era for the smart electric vehicles. That's why we believe that battery electric vehicle will be the ultimate product and the ultimate solution. Then all the other intermediate solutions or products will only complicate the system because with smart technologies, EV system is already complicated enough. We don't want other transitional technologies or intermediate technologies to further complete that, especially if you look at the full life cycle cost and the full life cycle quality of this product, especially if they are not as good or as robust as battery electric vehicle. Plus, we believe that with smart electric vehicle, the car itself is becoming a mobile living space because many of our users, they actually would like to stay in their car even when the car is parked, because we have Pano Cinema, we have Dolby Atmos, we have a very immersive experience. So they can actually park the car there and listen to music, watch a film, or even wear our AR glasses for a more immersive experience. But this kind of experience cannot be realized in an ICE car. Imagine you have the engine sound in your ear, and you also have this pollution where you park the ICE cars by the roadside. That's why we believe that the smart electric vehicle with battery as the core, which is the ultimate solution for that. Back to Europe, uh, in terms yeah. of your start here, uh, are you satisfied with your product portfolio, with your models? Because maybe it could be a goal for you to produce compact cars yeah. but because there's a lack in Europe yeah. of small compact electric cars yeah. but yeah. you are starting with uh, a, a, a premium sedan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what do you think about your portfolio? Uh, you have to work on it? Yeah. As you may know that in our new Berlin event we have unveiled and introduced the three models. ET7, that is our mid-large sedan on the NT 2.0 platform. We also have the EL7, that is our main large SUV. And we also have ET5, that is a mid-size sedan. So these three models are very characteristic and also competitive in its own segments. And of course, we understand that there is a strong need for a smaller and more compact car here in Europe, especially in countries like France, Italy, or in the UK. We do have a plan to develop a smaller and a more compact car for these users. We also study the scenarios and the use cases of these users in these countries. And we will actually have that in our portfolio plan, a smaller, more compact car. So, in conclusion, yeah. William, what advice do you give to our um, participants in, 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 in Berlin? Yeah. Now they're watching you, all these automotive managers. Do you have any advice or greeting to them? Well, I may not say it's a piece of advice, but I do hope that it can give you some inspiration because for NEO, although we are still a young startup, but we've also been through some ups and downs and the difficult times. Like in 2019 and 2020, we were actually on the brink of bankruptcy. And then in 2020, when we just got back to the pace, we actually ran into the COVID-19 and also supply chain crisis and the chip shortage issues. So if I were to ask, what if I'm asked to give some advice? Well, I have two pieces. The first is that in times of uncertainties, what matters most for us is to think for the long run and do the right things for the long run. Because a lot of people, they become more short-sighted in times of uncertainty. But for us, we believe that we should plan for the long term for the future. With that, we have the good hope for the good future. This is very important. And the second is to focus on the actions. Actually, in July this year, when we have the Partner Conference Day, I also share the same opinion with all the supply chain partners. I actually said we are better doing than worrying. Which means that if you have a worry and concern, why don't you take actions instead of just worrying? William, thank you very much for thank your you time. Thank you very much. Okay. Have a wonderful time in yeah. Europe and good luck with your study. Thank you very much. And now back to Berlin. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.